And now I am joined by Andre Tourigny, the head coach of the Ottawa 67s and the OHL's coach of the year. Congrats, Bear. How are you feeling about this this honor and what's been an, an unusual ending to an amazing season? Yeah, that was uh, that's an amazing honor. I think always, always proud to be named by your peers. But it's an individual honor for a teamwork. You know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of people working really hard behind the scene, and uh, I think from the management, Jan and James, and all, you know, all the coaches, Mario, Derek, uh, Norm, Bush, and Gordo, and Mark, and uh, Hammy, and Dano, Chip, and so. It's it's really a, a teamwork from everybody and the environment was like great around our team and the tools they give us. It's fantastic. You touch on all of the all the behind the scenes stuff that goes on there, and, and one thing is one thing that I've noticed um, is that your office you don't have your own office. Your office in the in the locker room area in the hallway down at TD Place. You're with all the other coaches. Yeah, exactly. uh, and, and that I don't know if that's an unusual thing, but it, it's certainly the first I've seen that here in a while. And just just talk about that relationship, and then and, and why you do it that way, and just how collaborative this this is to get to get to this point of celebrating these individual awards. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it, it's all a mindset for me. We're we're not a coach or assistant coach here. We're we're coach. We're all coach. And I have a privilege in the owner to be uh, to be the head coach, uh, but. Uh, I, I everybody who work with us for me are on the same same level. I don't think I don't like your hierarchy. I don't like uh, put anybody ahead of everybody. I think it's a teamwork, and I, I I want each individual in our group wants I want them to be the head coach of what they have to do of their role. So Mario is the head coach of the defenseman and the head coach of the D. Norm is the head coach of the power play. Uh, Derek Miller is the head coach of uh, the player development. Sean, Sean Young is the head coach of uh, the, the strength and conditioning. And uh, we go on and on. Same thing with Charlie is the head coach of the goalie. I, I want to empower everybody. And I'm just fortunate to work with the right people. I think it's, uh, I, I think it's uh, the third time I, I have that honor. And uh, every time it was with Mario as assistant coach. So I, I give a lot of credit to Mark, Mario. I, I just sent a text to his wife and saying, I'm lucky this guy always m- make me look good. So uh, I'm really fortunate to have a guy like that working on, a, on our staff. But the same thing for every every people here around. They have a, they, uh, I respect all of them. I want them to be, able to be free to share their opinion and we take the opinion of everybody here. It's not about who has whatever the role in the team. It's about finding out the best idea in the group we have and just applying the best idea. Not it's not about ego and knowing who who has the idea. That's not important. What's important is do what's best for the team. Do you do you and Mario even have to talk to each other vo- verbally now, or do you guys just like you give each other a look and like you know a little cue? Yeah. You are already you, you you two always seem to to know what's you know what the other one's going to do. That like you're always on the same page without even you know having to having to force it. It's just it's just there. Absolutely, and, and the, the fact we're friends off the ice, and our wives are friends, and you know my my kids play with their, their kids, and even if they are different of age, I think it's a lot of respect between both. So. Uh, really fortunate to have that relationship with uh, with Mario. All right, well, let's stop talking about you you old guys behind the bench and behind the scenes for a second, right? You know, let's let's talk about the kids that are, the, the young men that are on the ice that are making all this uh-huh. happen. And we're going to get to that in one second because I have a, just a quick guest here to join us to say congratulations. Someone else from the, uh, the OSEG family uh, popping on here. Some of you say that you guys look alike. I'm not so <laughs> sure, but Red Blacks, Red Blacks head coach, Paul Apolis, uh, on with Andre Tourigny here celebrating an amazing achievement. Uh, thanks for popping by, Coach. Yeah, Andre, congratulations. It's awesome for you. And, and uh, really excited to see, uh, you know, it was great to see games this year and, and see the product you did. And just really proud of all your work, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, Lapo. I really like your T-shirt, by the way. I don't know if you did it on purpose, but I'm a well-known <laughs> Pats fan. So just yeah. saying. No, I'm a Pats, fan, Pats fan, not a Brady fan. <laughs> oh yes, I am. I'm a Brady fan as well. <laughs> well. I started out growing up from. I'm from New Hampshire, so I grew up. I actually grew up as a Jets fan because my brother got me something when I was a little kid. But after a while, I just had to give up and move on to loving the Patriots. 
Okay. Good. Good uh, stuff. Paul, before I before I let you go here, Paul, just can you can let me just ask you, just as as a coach to another, what what are some of the you know ma main philosophies that you know whatever whatever sport it is, hockey, football, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, a coach is a coach, and and, and what kind of translates uh, between you know transcends sport in terms of being a good coach. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I think certainly for me in, in my experiences in coaching is one, uh, making sure your players are part of the process. I've always felt that like, you know, the players have to do it on the field. We always talk about fixing it on the field. Like we, it may get, something may happen or something gets screwed up, find a way to fix it however you can. Um, and then certainly you want to have players who have a passion for the game uh, and get those type of people in the building. And then more than anything, I, I hope you just do it. You know, you just do what your players do well, you know, and the interesting Andre with hockey being so much, there's not as much stop and start. So I, I think, you, you know, you don't get to call as many plays as us, but it's really neat. It would be neat to see how you can, all right, put them in positions to be successful with such a fluid system, if that makes sense, Andre. It's a, it's, it's for sure it's a different game. It's more a, a lot of read and react, and you don't have a you don't have as many special specialists uh, that defensive and offensive. It's yeah. they, they need to be part of the the play all the time. It's different, but when you build a team in collective sports, football, basketball, and hockey, it's it's all. I think it's values and trusting people. I think I, I agree with uh, what Paul said about trusting player. And I don't think you can be successful as a coach if your player don't own your culture, your values, the way you want, you want to play. I think that starts with the player. If the player, if you fight against your player all the time, I, I, as a coach, we have limitation. I, I, I don't score goal and I, and I don't stop puck and I don't block shot. It, it's the player. So uh, they need, you need to listen to them and you need to sell to them. But as well, at some point, you need to believe and own the culture and the value you want to sell. So that's uh, at the end of the day, we have a different sports, which uh, it's a different teaching. Us, it's uh, way more in action and one action after the other one. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, we play in a sport where we do way more mistake than you guys in football, which is a stop play. It's like us, where we relate the most in football is our face-off. Face-off is a stop play. We start, in our language, we should not make a mistake on the, uh, on the face-off. It's it, Everybody should be prepared and we don't have 11 players. We have five. It should be... Everybody should do their assignment. Individual mistake will happen, but not system or structure mistake. So after, it's for sure, it's a different game. Now it's transition all over the place. So it's a, it's like a play a, a football game where you have turnover over, over turnover. It's it's kind of a chaos at some point. So hockey, it's a lot of that. It's a lot of that turnover. You know, and I know um, you don't get getting back into this, you know, getting back into the head coach's role I, uh, for myself, I used to think, no, X's and O's are important and scheme is important, but it, it's dwarfed by the room, how you teach your culture, how you teach what you want to. And the big one you said is trust. You know, we teach our players to, you know, you can say all you want, trust this person, but it's not going to happen until, until they actually interact together. And, and we, we, we have three, we have the three C's of trust we talk about. One, you better be competent at what you're doing because players don't trust guys who don't know what they're doing. Two, you better be a person of character. And three, you better care about your teammates. And if those three things do that, they're going to trust each other. And, you know, you know, that's what we try to do. Let me ask you this. What did you do as a team this year that you were proud of to create that culture of the team? Give me something. Give me something I can steal from you, buddy. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I think one result, which you won't answer your question, I will answer. I will try to answer your question after. Is the fact we had so many injury and the next guy up took over. We talk about trust. We had a lot of young player who play key role in our team. We had we had stud player. We had a really good player, but we had as well a second layer of really young player. And when our older player got hurt in the first half of the season, they really help the young guys they really uh they really took charge of elevate the young guys in the group in the 
depth chart of the team and make everybody part of part of the team. I think that that's a little bit of who I am, Paul. But what I'm the most proud of our team, it's what we do outside of the ice. Uh, what the way our guys work in 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 the gym individually, I'm really proud of that. And the way they behave outside of the ice. When when we receive email from Miss Jones at this school saying our guys and their presence really influence and were really a role model on young people. That that gave me the chill. When when we receive an email from a, a mom where his kid is a whatever as challenge and saying how much impact our player had and how much uh, this guy and our team took the time to taught to skate an impaired a visual impaired kid that that made me really, really proud as a person, as a dad, and as a coach. I think that is something I take a lot on our team. And I think when you're, uh, when you do those things, when you behave in the right way, I think the game is fair. I think at some point, a uh, good thing happened to good people. And the way our guys behave in the daily base, the way our older guys help the young guys to, because at the start of the season, a lot of light, had a lot of frustration. We had player who won the league championship and went to the final the year before who uh, arrived and did, did expect our team to be at the highest level right from the get-go. But at some point, they realized, okay, those 16, 17 years old kids, they, they're not there. So I like the way, when I'm most proud, the way they react. Instead to bitch and complain, they help those guys and they brought him up. They they lift those guys, and that is something we're extremely proud of with the 67. Yeah, excellent. It's good stuff. How about that? A little a little coaching lesson, impromptu coaching lesson on a Monday. Uh, thanks for dropping in, Paul. Get back to talking a little puck with, with Bear here. Uh, but uh, that was that was fantastic. Really appreciate you dropping yeah. in. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Oh, wasn't that great? A couple of coaches. I don't think I don't think you guys look as, as alike as everyone else seems to. I think they see a couple like of coaches and they're like, these guys look the same. I love it. Um, so yeah, just before I let you go on to the next thing, I know you've got another interview or two coming up this afternoon and everyone wants to talk to you. But yeah, just talking about the players, you can see over my shoulder here in my background. I think we got Keats there. Um, what is it about this team this year and, and just the guys that have come through here since you've been here? Like we've had some special groups of special groups of young men and young athletes come through here. And it's just been, it's been fun to watch. It's like I said, uh, five minutes ago is what, what I'm really love about our group is our player honing. It's not us, the coach who asked the player to behave the way they behave off the ice or on the ice. It's, among themselves. It's the way Ty Falaber was behaving with people outside of the ring last year. It's a culture who go on and on. The competitiveness of Sasha Chimilevsky on the ice every practice in the workout brought everybody on another level. And this year, the Austin Keating was the energy of the team and the Noel Offenmeyer that was the guy who didn't want to be better every day. And the Marco Rossi and the Jack Quinn who were the hardest working guy in the team and the Kevin Ball was so driven. So now you have all those older guys and the young guys feed off them and they, they, they mold their game, they mold their identity around those guys. That's what I'm extremely proud of. As a coach, when, when you teach them to do stuff, okay, it's one thing. But when the player teach at each other, you talk about Keats. Keats every game was coaching every game to every player we're coming back on the bench. Hey, look at this, look at that. Don't do this, whatever what it is. He was he was a coach for us. So when it's coming from the player, that's it's what I think is a strong culture, and our player make us extremely proud this year. And it just makes your job that much easier. It must You must just lick your lips as a coach when you see these guys emerge into these leaders. And you go back, you talk about Keats as a young player. I remember his first camp and coming in, learning from guys like a Travis Barron who was here at the time. And and guys see that and you say like, and you see a guy like Feliber, and you can see a 16-year-old eyes light up saying, I can, you know, that's what I want to do. And so to, like, to see that, I know it's amazing for us to watch behind the scenes, but for coaches, you must, and when, and, and when they put all that together and they're like, you know, scoring 50 goals or 50 goals a season and winning 50 games in a year, it just, it's, it's an amazing thing. 
Absolutely. And, you know, yeah, in, in, in no time we'll talk about Alec Belanger, who saw Ty Faliber, saw Austin Keating, and he will be the next guy in line who, who will teach the young guys and he will bring leadership. And we have the, the young Jack Quinn two years ago was looking for the Sasha Chimilevsky and how hard he was working. And now he's the guy who would lead the, the group by his work ethic and different things. That is what that's what make make me proud. And you want to build a program. It's not just okay, winning is a uh, is great. Hope we will win every year. But at some point when you build something where the player own the culture and they are building the tradition, and I think that's what's strong. See, I knew we would do this interview and I knew we would talk about you the least out of all of it, because I know <laughs> I know how much it means to you to be part of this group and that everyone else gets gets the credit where where it's due and certainly it's due all around with this group but today's your day so coach of the year congratulations well deserved and tsn 1200 is going to be calling you in about eight minutes perfect thank you all, all right <laughs> thanks. thanks coach appreciate the time bye